Welcome to the In the Word Bible Study, brought to you by Bartlett Woods Church of Christ. We're excited uh, that you're joining us uh, today, and we'll be bringing you another Bible study where we use a, a panel approach uh, to examine Scripture and provide suggestions for practical application. I'm Wiley Street, and our uh, panel uh, today is comprised of Chris Anschultz, Kevin Bingham, Weston Keene, and David Payne. So tonight, we're going to be looking at James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. That's James 1, 2 through 4. And let's read that. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect, and complete, lacking in nothing. So, Weston, in order to help us with with some of the some of the context here, James, James is is a, a fairly um, uh, diverse book uh, with a lot of practical stuff in it. But um, if you would give us a little little background on, on James and the book of James uh, or the book of James and, and uh, help lead us into this discussion uh, today. All right. It's good to be back on here with you guys. Um, anytime that you begin a book of the Bible, I think the first question that always is asked is who wrote it. So we'll start with there. Um, the best description for the author of the book of James is in James 1 verse 1 where it says, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I think the key thing to know about James is he is a person that identified himself as one who lived a life of service to God. Your version might say a bondservant to God, or your version might even say a slave to God. Um, many people believe that this book was written by James, the half-brother of Jesus. One perhaps stretch you can make with that thought is there's reference in the New Testament that even Jesus' brothers did not believe that he was the Son of God. It is believed that James was definitely written after the life of Jesus, so perhaps James was somebody who was converted upon hearing of the story of his brother or from the things that he saw. That's just things that we can infer, though, and there's no biblical, I guess, proof to back that thought up, but it's something that I would consider. I love the book of James. It's one of my favorite books in all of the New Testament. I've heard the book of James described as the Old Testament book of Proverbs draped or clothed in a New Testament feel. And I guess what that means is that it gives us statements that some are standalone and they've been divided into verses for us, some in paragraph form of how to truly live a Christian life, a life of holiness. Uh, the passage that we're going to read tonight and study from tonight talks about how we must count it all joy when you meet different trials of various kinds. And that you know that testing of your faith produces a steadfastness and let that steadfastness have its full effect that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. All those things are about current lifestyles. And that's what you see throughout the book of James. The book of James has kind of a theme to it of replacing perhaps negative things and replacing those with acts of godliness and holy living. Um, a couple of other ideas on the book of James is that it talks to us not only about faith and describing faith and what faith is, but how it is actually applied in the daily temptations that we face. That we face. Um, I believe once we go through this passage tonight and we divide it up and kind of dig into each statement that's made in um, these few verses, I think you'll see that this is truly a book of application to a life of holiness and to Christian living. Thank you, Weston. That was a good uh, a good lead in to uh, to our scripture for this evening. It, Chris, um, 
first two has a, a statement in there that we would certainly, or, or at least I would, and I think most people would, would think it was, was counterintuitive. Uh, talk to us a little bit about um, that, uh, that, that joy in the midst of trials. Yeah, thanks, Polly. Um, yeah, I agree. It's, uh, I don't think that any of us stop at any given point when we've got a trial immediately and we start giving thanks uh, in, in just this joyous nature most of the time. It's, you know, this, this reaction that we have. And uh, like Weston said, you know, the book of James and this practical application that it's giving to us in our lives. But, you know, uh, it, it reminded me as we were, I was thinking about this week um, and this study, we were talking about this. So a few weeks ago, um, I've got a nephew that's uh, trying to learn to ride a bike. You know, uh, it's a simple matter, but it's learning to ride a bike. And, uh, you know, uh, there's some joy that he's thinking about in this, but he knows this trial is at, is at hand. And there are bruises on the knees and knocks are going to happen and falls are going to take place. Um, but he recognizes that, you know, once we've gotten through it, if you know how to ride a bike, right? You never forget, right? And so we get just get back on the bike. You ride the bike, and we have the joy that's there. But do you remember when your dad or your mom was pushing you down that street or down that dirt path? And it wasn't too joyous. <laughs> I can I remember falling off of that bike and it hurting pretty bad. You know, um, really thought about that. It just struck me in thinking about trials that we have. Um, Friday, Joyce found out she had coronavirus. Um, she's been sick since Sunday, uh, tests came in on Friday. Um, she's going stir crazy because we've got a quarantine in her room and it hadn't been very joyous for her, uh, in all this, this little, little trial that's come by, um, and what's going on. Uh, she's been pretty sick as a matter of fact, you know, lots of aches and pains and fever. She hasn't had the mild case. She hasn't had the extreme case and we're, we're grateful for that. Um, and so trials are going to come at us. Those are some simple trials. Um, you know, James is talking to a group of people that have been dealing with some trials. He's talking to a group of people who he loves dearly, um, that he's living around and that he's looking at this, at, at these people and saying, the devil's attacking us from all angles. And no matter what that trial is, and, he, and it doesn't, because it doesn't say, hey, it's only the big trials. It's, it's only, it's not just the trial that cancer is giving to you. It's not just the trial that you know, COVID-19 might put on your family. It's not those just large trials. It says, count it all joy when you meet trials of various kinds. And I, I'm going to tell you, uh, our life can be literally put on tilt with the smallest things. Um, we can lose our faith, not, not our faith. We certainly can um, sometimes slip pretty easily with very small things in this life bad service and all of a sudden man you flash hot and maybe you say something maybe you trash them pretty good when they're done with it right um trials that come in our way come in all forms of shapes and sizes and i think the key of this though is finished in three and four as it carries it out of what those trials will produce that joy of that riding that bike right that joy of getting through um having you know, COVID, that joy of the other side of what it is. The thing is, though, sometimes we don't, we don't actually uh, maybe see the physical joy of some of those trials. Sometimes we don't get through the other side. Sometimes uh, death awaits us. Sometimes some physical ailment that we may have to deal with for the rest of our life is on the other side. That's not the joy that that we're waiting for. That's not it. It's that steadfastness that it's going to talk about. It reminds me in first Peter, uh, in one, it, it says in this, you rejoice though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials so that the tested genuineness of your faith, that tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes through it is tested by fire and may found to result in praise and glory in honor of the revelation of Christ. And that the trials that we face is because through that, hopefully, we're lifting up Christ, that we're giving that praise and glory he deserves. Later on in the book of James, in, in chapter one, 
it went on and it goes count it, uh, it goes uh, it tells us blessed is a man who remains steadfast during trial he repeats himself coming out of his verses because when he stood the test he's going to receive the crown of life right it's that trial is this walk of faith that we're in and the fact of uh, some of these lessons that we talked about that grace and that joy that abounds with inside of the christian is so paramount and so important in what we have in our lives no trial is at the, for the on the outside of it seems joyous no uh nothing along that line does but those that have christ-centered lives those that have it can understand that christ is sharpening us is molding us is continuing to um to chip away at us to make us who we need to be and uh and if we just have that patience the steadfastness that it's talking about that we're going to be better people for it, that we're going to grow from it um that our ability to help someone else the next time or that I can have a discussion with someone because I've been through it that I can help them understand have some patience it's going to be okay I know you've lost a job but there there are great things waiting for you doors will open windows are going to fly open god's got great things for you and it, we as his people have to believe um constantly that god is constantly moving and putting great things before you um we just have to be ready to receive those things and take it and we got to count it all joy uh with everything that comes at us thank you chris you know as, as you was talking uh one one thing that uh came to my mind was you know, there's the old saying of every cloud has a silver lining uh, sometimes that silver lining is kind of tough to find it uh, is isn't it yeah so yeah so that but uh that, but we we have to have to uh dig down deep and uh let's, right. let's keep the joy alive in our hearts yep so kevin verse three tells us about a a benefit that we get if we do what uh uh, Chris just read from us in verse two. If, if we can, if we can count it joy, then there's there's some benefits there. Tell us a little bit about that. Thanks, Wiley, and thanks, Weston and Chris, for your uh, uh, insight and comments. Um, I and I really want to continue. I guess the thought that Chris was saying about how all the things that we encounter. Uh, all the things that, that ha happen to us in our life <clears throat> test our faith. They, they challenge us uh, as to what, where we put our trust, maybe who we're putting our trust in. Um, Chris mentioned losing a job. You know, do, do you put your trust in the job that you have? Do you put your trust in the company or the organization that you work for, or do you put your trust, trust in God? And when our we have health challenges, do we put our trust in the health that we've been given uh, and maybe treatments that are out there, or do we put our trust in God? And so all these things that we encounter, uh, we're always being asked, uh, or I feel myself being asked each and every day uh, with the challenges set before me, where am I putting my trust? Do I trust in my ability, my circumstances, or do I trust in God? When Chris was talking, it couldn't, I couldn't help but think of a story. Uh, one of my boys, when he was young, uh, I think maybe uh, three years old, we had a play set in the backyard, and it had a, a, plat, a ladder that went up to a platform. And uh, the platform was maybe three, four feet off the ground, and uh, – I was in the backyard doing something and he, he was learning to climb the ladder and Anna saw it and she, she opened the back door and she said, are you letting him climb that ladder by himself? And uh, <laughs> I kind of laughed. I said, yeah, he, he needs to learn to climb the ladder. And uh, she's like, well, okay. And it, it probably wasn't 30 seconds after she shut the door that he was on the top uh, step of the ladder and he lost his balance and fell and wham, hit the, hit the ground, knocked the breath out of him. And, <laughs> you know, once he caught his breath, he started crying. And, uh, 
um, I, I just, it, it's so many times in my life I think about that. I think about how important um, those lessons are for all of us. We've all had experiences like that where we're learning to do things and we fall and we get the breath knocked out of us or, you know, something just, just really um, knocks our feet out from under us. Uh, and, and we cry a little bit. We get some, uh, hopefully get some sympathy from our friends or family or whoever it is, but we get back up and try again. And I, I can promise you today that that son of mine, I have three, he is probably the best climber out of all three of them. <laughs> um, one thing I wanted to mention, I wanted to reference was um, in this passage, we talked about where we put our faith. And one of the verses that came to mind for me is Hebrews 13, eight. And I love that verse because it says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And our circumstances are always changing. Um, challenges are always being put in front of us. Things are happening that we're concerned about. And um, we lose people in our lives just just think about all the myriad of things that go on while we're here on the earth. And I always get brought back to that verse, Hebrews 13, eight, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And when we go through these trials, we see what's happening uh, to us. Uh, we have faith. We endure these things and, uh, a transformation begins to happen um, as we go through these trials. And Chris talked about this, uh, referenced this, that, that um, it produces uh, steadfastness, the ESV says, the NIV and other versions say perseverance. And thinking about perseverance, I thought back to uh, Luke 8 and uh, Jesus talking about the, uh, the parable uh, of the seed and the sower. And uh, in Luke 8, verse 15, it says, But the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering, produce a crop. This year, for the first time, I planted uh, potatoes. And uh, potatoes are pretty interesting. Um, and I'll several things in my garden are interesting because it takes a long time to get fruit out of a garden and the potatoes, interestingly enough, I think it's like 90 to a hundred days before they uh, produce any fruit. Um, and it took, uh, it's actually a little bit longer. Once the plant dies, you just leave the potatoes in the ground and then uh, give them a couple of weeks and then you dig them up. Um, and I always think about, uh, the perseverance that it takes uh, to have a garden, you know, of farmers and the things that they do um, that you have to wait, you have to, you have to till the ground and do all those things and water and pray, pray for rain uh, so that, so that um, the, the good crop is produced just like the trials uh, do for our faith and produce that, that perseverance in us. But I don't want to take up uh, too much of a, any of David's thunder. So uh, I'll uh, turn it back over to you, Wiley. Thank you, Kevin. Appreciate, uh, appreciate those, those thoughts. And, and um, that, um, uh, that thought about who we, sh who our trust should go to really, really resonated. Uh, that's, that was, that was a good thought. So David verse four uh, continues a, the, the thought of this, this benefit. So tell us a little bit more about uh, what he says there about the, the benefit. And, and also, I got to know, can we really be perfect? Well, uh, I, I, hate to, I hate to tell you, Kevin, but, but Kevin and Chris and, and Wes, they, all, all of y'all kind of took all my points already. So uh, I, I can make it pretty short and sweet and just say, no, we're not perfect. We, can, we cannot be perfect. Um, no, so, so that was the, the easy question is, no, we cannot be perfect. Um, but as, as Kevin mentioned, uh, I, I kind of did a little comparison between uh, the ESV and, and NIV here. And, you know, there, there were a couple things that came out. 
Um, again, we mentioned kind of that steadfastness being um, in the NIV called perseverance. Uh, and, and Kevin did a, a good job talking about uh, perseverance. Uh, in verse four here, um, where the ESV says, let steadfastness have its full effect, uh, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Uh, the NIV actually says mature and complete. And I, I think that's really kind of where it's um, where it's kind of going with with those thoughts is that, um, you know, the trials uh, that we can grow through, learn from, uh, gives us that maturity uh, and the ability to deal with those trials in the future, like Chris was talking about. Um, but that that gives us the the maturity there. So uh, while while we can't be perfect, uh, we can grow uh, in in our maturity. Um, you know, to in, in trials, through trials. Um, other thing I thought interesting between ESV and NIV, um, the, the ESV actually has um, verse four as the end of a paragraph, uh, where that NIV actually, uh, it's all one paragraph through verse eight. Um, so I was, I was actually going to read uh, verses five through eight because uh, I, I think it kind of adds more to uh, the discussion around the first four verses. Um, so starting in verse five, it says, if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault. And it will be given to him. But when he asks, he must believe and not doubt because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind that man should not think that man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all he does. Um, and so, you know, there, there's a couple things that uh, that really kind of stand out about that. Um, you know, we talk about, we, we've kind of talked about it in our discussion, um, you know, kind of coming to that maturity, uh, growing through trials, um, kind of learning from from mistakes and all that. But I think another thing that that we get from that that steadfastness, um, you know, Jesus, when you think about his ministry, uh, was always kind of um, harping on hypocrisy. Uh, that, was, that was one thing that that you know really kind of aggravated Jesus in in his ministry was was hypocrisy and. And that can can really come about if you think about it is, you know, if you have these followers of Christ, right, that are out on the street corners preaching God. Um, and if if they were to, to reach any kind of bumps in the road, any trials um, can just drop their faith, um, start doubting everything. You know, th those aren't the followers that God wants. Um, and so, so not only, you know, is it good that we can persevere through trials and remain steadfast in God, uh, it, it also um, makes good followers, you know, of God that, that can be a good example to, to other Christians. And, and I think that, um, that most often people are brought to God uh, by witnessing someone who remains steadfast through a trial. Um, you know, it, it's not, um, probably more often, more often is someone remaining in God through a trial, um, kind of more powerful than, you know, the, the person who's up on a mountain peak, you know, when things are good, um, you know, the, the, the people, people really take notice when, when you're going through a valley uh, and that's, that's really kind of, um, you know, what, what God is looking for. Uh, Chris, Chris alluded to verse 12, blessed is the man who perseveres under trial because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. Um, and then even down uh, in verse 17, um, uh, Kevin alluded to the verse in Hebrews, but a uh, very similar verse in 17, um, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. Uh, so there again, you know, 
God remains the same. He is constant forever. Uh, he, he wants his followers to remain, to remain constant through trials in him. Thank you, David. Uh, appreciate you uh, uh, wrapping that, uh, that up with us. Some uh, really good thoughts there. All right, guys. So in, in closing, um, uh, what, uh, what have we got to, to uh, add to this? Um, uh, any other thoughts before we uh, close out today? I think one thing that we've focused on kind of in this particular discussion, which I think has been great is perhaps a suffering or a trial that's just based on the circumstances of life, which is definitely true. Um, this virus we have right now is just, uh, I guess you would say circumstance or someone say happenstance. It's has really nothing to do with being a Christian or not. It's affecting non-Christians just like it's affecting Christians. But another type of suffering that I think the Bible explicitly talks about or a trial that we're going to face is due to being a Christian. Um, and I think that can even be applied here to what James is saying. And then I also think you can pair it, can pair it with what Peter said in first Peter chapter four, verse 13, when he said, but rejoice that you participate in the sufferings of Christ and, and the things that I've gone through in my life, when I felt like, um, I was going through a trial that was based on decisions that I had to make because I was a Christian. That's a verse that I've tried to remember. Um, never will I ever experience the sufferings of Christ. And we won't even come close to that at all. But what a blessing, what a privilege, and something that we should rejoice in, that we might have the opportunity to suffer as a Christian because he suffered for us. Yeah, I agree, Weston. I was, uh, there were some passages that I had, had pulled up and just from a time perspective, didn't jump into it. But in Matthew five, he talks about, you know, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, right? For theirs is the kingdom of heaven and bless you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account, rejoice and be glad because your reward is great in heaven. And in second Corinthians, it says, my grace is sufficient for you because for my power is made perfect in weakness. Right. And that's when he says, I, I rejoice. I, I'm going to boast all the more in my weaknesses because that's when that's when Christ is, is, is building me up in my faith. And that last passage that I had was out of Luke, uh, which I love because it's it basically says, you know, <laughs> everybody in the world can be against you. But, you know, don't worry about it because I got you. You know, blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you, when they revile you and spurn your name as evil. Uh, on account on account of the Son of Man, <laughs> and that we're to rejoice in that day and leap for joy, because our reward is great in heaven. Um, you know that's uh, that's pretty strong, and uh, but it's because of we're doing it in His name. You know we walk in this thing called grace um, that we have, and God says not everything's going to be perfect. And we're not perfect, like David says. We're just to continue on. We're continuing to that grace under his name and to keep going, even though people are going to literally hate us and, and, and revile you and spurn your name. I love that. Revile you and spurn your name as evil on account of the son of man. And uh, I think that's when you know you kind of got it right, honestly. And uh, it's those days when people are casting the biggest stones at you. Um Maybe hard to see, but just lift your head because you're getting it right, you know, in, in a lot of ways because you're doing it because of him. And so, yeah, I appreciate that, Weston. That was a good comment. Uh, one thing I, I forgot to mention, too, that, that Chris just reminded me of, um, you know, alluding to, you know, the, the question again about, you know, we are not perfect, but, but God is. Um, Immediately after verse four, verse five, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God. You know, so it while while we are not perfect, God is. So just ask Him. Well, thank you, uh, everybody. Um, uh, again, uh, as as usual, I've I've enjoyed it uh, and uh, appreciate you guys uh, taking the. Uh, taking the time to uh, to take a look at, at these scriptures and and uh, uh, do some studying on it and and uh, talk, talking to us about that. We want to thank everybody for uh, for tuning in and uh, uh, hope that you will continue to do so. 
it's this group's um, uh, last lesson. Uh, there's going to be another group that's going to kick off uh, uh, next week. So uh, looking forward to it. We're doing that in order to keep things fresh so you don't get tired of seeing the same old ugly mugs all the time. So uh, uh, hope, uh, hope you'll uh, uh, tune back in next time. So, but remember, don't let the study stop here. Uh, man, these guys have already pointed you in several different directions that you can continue this study in. Uh, take a look at the rest of, of James. Man, you can, read the, you can read the book of James in, in, uh, in, in probably 30, 45 minutes and, and uh, uh, take a look at that and, and study that. That would be a good place to start. But remember just to keep, keep studying. So thank you again for being here. And uh, uh, we uh, have enjoyed doing this. And the next group will be up next week. Thank you.